Making virtual reality games and applications with Unity is easy. In this video, I'll go over the concepts and implementation of adding cardboard support to a Unity project. As you may know, Unity is a game engine with an editor that allows you to easily import 3D models and arrange them in the scene. You can also attach scripts to objects to give them functionality. Before we start, make sure to get the Cardboard Unity plugin from this link. Then, open your Unity project and import a package like this. Now that you're all set, there are two things you need to do. You need to create a stereoscopic camera and make sure your user interface works well for virtual reality. Let's start with adding the camera and look into modifying the UI at the end. You can do so by using one of the available prefabs objects or by attaching a script to an existing camera. The easiest way is to use the Cardboard Main Prefab. This is best if you're starting a new project or haven't made any changes to your existing camera. Simply replace the existing camera with the Cardboard Main Prefab and you're done. You can still add any custom scripts on top for controlling the camera, for example. Press play and you'll have a functioning stereoscopic view. You can rotate the camera using the Alt key while moving the mouse. To simulate cardboard trigger, press the left mouse button. If you already have a camera, you can use the Cardboard Adapter Prefab. Add it as a child of your camera and select Update Stereo Cameras from the Components menu. Once again, you can press play and have a functioning stereoscopic view in the game window. If you don't want to use a prefab, then you can just use a script. By adding the stereo controller script to your camera, two stereoscopic cameras will be created dynamically as you press play. You may not want to use the stereo controller script since it doesn't let you add any image processing on top of the cameras because they are added dynamically. If you want to create the cameras in the editor, then simply select Update Stereo Cameras from the menu and they will be created for you. Press play and you are done. The last thing we have to do is get the user interface working and add support for the trigger. Start by adding the Gaze Input Module script to the Scenes Event System object. This script emits ray casts for the event system based on the user's gaze. Next, in your UI element, set the canvas render mode to world space and set the event camera to a camera controlled by a cardboard head script, either directly or as a parent. At this point, the system is able to respond to the user's gaze and triggers so that UI elements such as buttons can be activated. If you wish to interact with 3D objects in the scene, add a physics raycaster component to the event camera. Designate an in-game object to be interactive by adding a collider component to interact with the raycaster and by adding a script to respond to the generated events. An event trigger is a good choice or you can implement some of the standard Unity event interfaces on your own scripts. If you wish to add a cursor to let the user see the point of their gaze, set the gaze input models cursor to the game object that will serve this role. This cursor will be moved to the exact point on whatever UI object the user is gazing at. If the event camera has a physics ray caster, then this includes 3D objects with the collider components. If no object is hit by a ray cast, the cursor is hidden. Now that you know how to make everything work, it is important to keep in mind some best practices in order to make a compelling virtual reality experience. The three most important rules to remember are always keep tracking on, keep stable 60 frames per second or higher, and avoid unexpected motion. One of the things that makes virtual reality compelling is the ability to look around. In contrast, it will feel extremely unnatural if the camera stopped responding to your head. Therefore, you should always take into account the user's orientation and never freeze the camera or force the user to look somewhere specific. If you want to grab the user's attention, use cues such as light and sound to direct them to look where you want. You can also delay activating an event in your scene until you know the user had turned their head in that direction. That way, they have time to take things in and enjoy the scene. You must always keep the 60 FPS or higher. 
Not only does it contribute to a good user experience, but it is even more crucial in virtual reality. Think about it this way. The screen is the only thing the user can see. Rendering at 60 FPS means the user sees the same frame for 16.6 milliseconds. If you miss 60 FPS, VSync drops you to 30 FPS, and each frame is shown for 33 milliseconds. That means as the user moves their head, they're getting an incorrect image for a very long time. This is why it is very important for virtual reality applications to be fast and responsive. Movement can be tricky because the user does not feel like they're in motion. If the world starts moving around, it can contribute to an odd feeling if there is discrepancy between one's actual lack of movement and what the user is seeing. There are ways to convey movement safely, for example, by keeping motion constant and avoiding acceleration, or by using another object and making it move first or creating a path for the user to see. This signals to the user they're about to be moved and subconsciously prepares them. There are many more ways to ensure a good user experience. I recommend you to check out the Cardboard Design Lab application to learn more about good and bad design patterns so you can create the best user experience in your game or application. Good luck with making your own virtual reality experience and make sure to post about it in our Cardboard community. Mm -hmm.